Hey guys, today we're going to talk about uh, adjusting or pulling the frequency of a crystal oscillator. What I assembled here is a standard Pierce oscillator with a 14.060 MHz crystal. And if you happen to be an amateur radio operator, you will notice that this is the uh, QRP CW frequency for the 20 meter band. Over here, I'm using a 3 gigahertz counter. It's a TTI TF930. It's a very nice counter. And uh, I'm using a 10 megahertz reference input from a Jackson Labs GPS disciplined temperature compensated oscillator. So the measurement over there is fairly accurate. And the first thing you may notice is that uh, the crystal frequency again is 14.060 megahertz. And uh, well, we're about 1.122 kilohertz above target frequency. That's not very good. So obviously most crystal oscillators, especially in amateur radio designs, have some sort of element included in the design to adjust the frequency on the fly. And in most case, this is a uh, adjustable capacitor, a little trim cap, like uh, this little fella right here. So let's plug it into the circuit, and uh, let's see if we can adjust our frequency. All right, now the little trim cap is in series with the crystal, and I just want to point out that the uh, crystal is being used in serious resonance here. Uh, it doesn't really matter much for the purpose of this video. But for the ones of you that are more interested in how crystals work and how crystal oscillators work in general, there's uh, parallel resonance and serious resonance, and uh, we're using serious resonance. I'm not going to dig much deeper into that. I just want to mention that on the side. The trim cap has a capacity of 9.8 to 60 picofarads, at least so the label claims. And the first thing we note if we look at our frequency counter is the frequency is now higher than it was before. But all right, now we can adjust it, right? So uh, another thing you may want to know is uh, if you adjust a crystal oscillator or any oscillator for that matter, you want to use an insulated tool like this one right here because if you're putting your normal screwdriver in there, you'll actually kick your frequency off just by putting it in and you think you adjust it to the right point and the moment you remove your tool, the frequency will uh, jump off again. Alright, so let's see if we can adjust the frequency now to 14.060 uh, megahertz. Okay, I'm turning around right now. Okay, the frequency increases this way, so let's turn the other way. Hmm, that doesn't seem to be working. So you see, I turned the uh, cap around a couple of times now, and while we do see a big difference in frequency, the frequency that we get is always higher than what we want. We want 14.060 megahertz, right? But we don't get that. So why is that? The answer is actually fairly simple. Anytime you put a capacitor in series with a crystal, you will increase the frequency of your resonance circuit. And uh, since your capacitor can't, or usually your trim capacitor does never have a capacitance of zero, your frequency will always be higher than what you had before you introduce the trim cab into the circuit. And that's a real problem in real life. I see plenty of amateur radio operators operating very small CW transceivers, their QRP or even QRPP circuits, and they think they're transmitting on the right frequencies, uh, namely the QRP frequencies of the uh, amateur radio bands, but often they are really transmitting several kilohertz higher and they're not even aware of that. They think they have their trim cap uh, and you know they assume that they can tune across the right frequencies, but they actually don't. So uh, how do you fix that in a real life circuit? Well, glad you asked. We're gonna talk about this here in a second. First off, let me swap, swap the crystal to a 20 megahertz crystal. Uh, why, I'll explain in a second. And uh, then we'll try out a couple of variations of the circuit. Okay, I replaced the 14.060 megahertz crystal now with a 20 megahertz crystal, and I try to adjust it, the circuit to the lowest frequency possible. And as you can see, we are still about 
what is that uh, 4.5 kilohertz well around about 4.6 kilohertz above target frequency I just don't seem to be able to get the crystal to the right frequency now one thing I want to mention here is obvious it's actually obvious but uh, I want to show it too if you introduce a serious capacitance you will increase the frequency of your crystal oscillator now let's see what happens if you put it in parallel and like I said it's kinda obvious you would assume the frequency would decrease but let's check out if it, if it actually is true in a real life circuit okay now I put the trim cap in parallel with the uh, crystal and sure enough we see a frequency that's slightly below what we want it to be about 2 kilohertz too low so we learned one thing already putting a capacitance in serious with your crystal will increase your resonance frequency and putting a capacitor in parallel with your crystal will decrease the resonance frequency okay that's a good lesson already we can work with that so one way of compensating for a serious capacitor is putting in a parallel trim cap and adjust so uh, that you get that you can adjust the frequency right around your center frequency which you desire in case of that QRP transceiver that I was mentioning earlier you will try to get it about centered around 14.060 megahertz but naturally you would ask the question okay if we can do this with capacitors what happens if we introduce a inductor an inductor into the entire equation and that leads us to what's actually done most of the time to compensate for a serious capacitor so let me bring this all back into a serious circuit let me put the crystal in serious with the uh, with the trim cap and let me put a, another serious uh, reactance in there namely a 2.2 microhenry inductor now I put my 20 megahertz crystal in serious with the 2.2 microhenry inductor and uh, my trim cap now remember the trim cap has a tuning range of 9.8 to 60 picofarads so I picked 30 picofarads kind of as middle point I know it's not really the middle point but I picked it for practical reasons which you'll see here in a second and uh, 30 picofarads at 20 megahertz has a reactance of about 265 ohms and that just happens to fit the standard value of an inductor namely a 2.2 microhenries at the same frequency a 2.2 microhenry inductor has a reactance of 276 ohms so that's fairly close so the idea here is that they can that the uh, capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance cancel each other out and therefore I should be able to tune the circuit below and above our target frequency and now if you look at the frequency counter you can tell that the frequency is already much closer to our target value which is 20 megahertz so let me get my tuning tool here again and let me tune see we can go up and we're dropping down below 20 megahertz so with a little bit of fine tuning one can get very 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 close to 20 megahertz now the circuit is relatively sensitive it's very difficult to do by hand but let's call this close enough for now you can see what you can do by introducing a reactance in series with a crystal and uh, this Pierce oscillator that I'm using right here is actually a very common circuit it's used a lot with uh, digital logic and instead of a transistor they often use a inverting buffer of some sort and like I said the Pierce oscillator is probably one of the most common crystal oscillators used now if you look at my circuit design very closely you may be missing a capacitor there's usually a capacitor from the collector to ground and another capacitor from the base of the transistor to ground and if you look at the circuit you only see this little cap here between the collector and ground and the reason the circuit still works is actually very simple transistors like this multi-purpose uh, 2N2222 are actually having a very large emitter base capacitance in this case I just looked it up in the data sheet it's about 25 picofarads so 
you can just use that as a as a capacitance. I don't need to actually put in an, an external capacitance of any sort. And that makes the circuit very easy, very few parts and well, theoretically, if you would put this back on an amateur radio frequency, let's say 14.060 MHz or any of the other frequencies out there, you have yourself a little uh, CW transmitter. All you gotta do is key the power on and off and you're keying a CW tone over the air. Now for a real life circuit, maybe if you want to be a little bit more uh, of a perfectionist, you would need to make sure that you're keying this very softly cause steep edges, cause all kinds of crazy stuff on the RF side. But that's material for a whole nother video. Let me summarize the results of our experiment. We know that if we introduce a Syrian's capacitance into a crystal oscillator, we will increase the resonance frequency. If we introduce a Sirius inductance, we will lower the resonant frequency. And we also know that the circuit behaves exactly the other way around, when we put those reactive elements in parallel. So a capacitance in parallel with a crystal oscillator will decrease your resonance frequency and an inductor in parallel with a crystal will increase your resonant frequency. Now keep in mind that what everything I just said applies for a crystal used in serious resonance. There's another configuration called parallel resonance but again that would be material for a whole nother video so I'm not going to go down this road right now. Another thing that I want to mention is that the uh, frequency range you can pull a crystal is dependent a lot on the crystal's frequency itself as the pullability is actually a very small percentage of the crystal's frequency. So a lower frequency crystal can be pulled over a much smaller range than a large frequency crystal. This is part of why I chose a 20 MHz crystal so that changes are apparent for you. And one thing that should be mentioned is the fact that these breadboards are really not nice for prototyping RF circuits especially when we're speaking about reactants here the circuit probably has a lot of unnecessary capacitive reactants and uh, due to all the jumpers in there and the long legs also quite a bit of inductive reactants so whenever you do some RF prototyping try to avoid these boards I think part of the reason why the first crystal that we saw uh, resonated at a higher frequency is probably the stake, stray capacitance in this circuit right here and uh, let me tell you that I had a lot of headaches because of breadboards when it comes to RF circuits I do not like them at all for RF prototyping if you take out the time to uh, solder your circuit on some actual PC board and even if you just do it in a little bit of copper clad board Manhattan or ugly construction style you will probably have a higher success rate and a lower frustration rate which is really desirable when playing with RF circuits okay I hope you learned something out of this video how to adjust your frequency of your frequency oscillator and how to compensate for stray capacitance or stray inductance now the matter of crystal oscillators is really big there's a lot of papers out there, there's a lot of research out there on uh, pulling crystal oscillators, on how crystals work, and there's some things that are totally neglected here, like load capacitance and other things like that. I'm not gonna get into this. Make sure you subscribe if you like this video, and let me know in the comments below what you like particularly about the video, but also what you didn't like, so that I can improve on future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.